Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today we're going to be talking about all of the recommended and must-have uh, products that you should have for your Glowforge or any laser engraver for that matter. Um, we're going to quickly go over each of these um, as quick as possible. It may be a little bit longer of a video. If you want to see all of these in person, I did do a video on this a long time ago, but there are a lot of missing products from that video to this one here. So we're going to briefly touch base on each of these products, what they do, why I recommend it. If you want to purchase any of these products or find this list here, I'll have the link to this in the description below. It is my Amazon affiliate shop. I do get commission off of it. If you want to support the channel and buy all of them in this nice list here, you can. Otherwise, you can find them on your own. That's perfectly fine too, whatever you want to do. With all that out of the way, let's get started. These four right here are my top recommended um, products here that you should always have. The digital caliper is for finding the kerf of your material, which we covered in a previous episode here. Um, the rubber tip hammer here is the exact same one that I use to tap all my designs together after I cut a 3D design. Um, the masking tape prevents like burns and edges uh, from being like charcoal or uh, that sappy color from the glue in the material as your laser cuts. And then finally, this is the um, big yellow squeegee that I talk about in a lot of my videos. This is used to apply the masking tape, and then these little ridges will activate the glue if you kind of use those. Um, this is the desk that I use for my Glowforge here. You don't have to use this one. You can use any desk that you want as long as it's flat, stable, and sturdy. You definitely want your Glowforge to be completely level or else the glass on the Glowforge will be tilted and can cause issues. Um, this right here um, is the 6 inch products of the hose. Um, so you can get an inline fan with an extension to have a 6 inch um, hose and you can do either this style or this style hose here. And you can connect it to your inline fan. Um, a little bit later, I'm going to show you the 4-inch style with the adapter to get up to the 6-inch fan uh, like I have it, if you want to do that. Um, this right here is something that I recently got. It was a Synology um, like cloud storage anywhere in the world. It's um, network-attached storage in your home. So this works great for backing up your files, being able to access it anywhere from the world. Um, you don't have to do this. You can use just regular like Google Drive or something. But if you're getting pretty uh, out of space and you're not liking the monthly charges, you can definitely consider that. You will need to buy your own hard drives. That's why I have this hard drive here. This is the hard drive I use in it. But you can totally just bypass that. You don't need that if you don't need extra storage. Um, this right here is a pre-filter for your Glowforge air filter. This helps um, make it last longer. I did do a previous video on this, so check that out. And then these are a lot of cleaning tools here. So like lens wipes will wipe off the actual lenses of your machine. Um, Simple Green will clean off all the metal parts of your machine. Do not spray it directly into the, the machine and make sure you wipe it all off directly. Don't leave any sitting in there because it could potentially cause rust if it just sits on there. These are just extra towels for the Simple Green. Um, this is like a white version of the Simple Green. Uh, straw cleaners are great for the actual metal grates on the back of your Glowforge for cleaning out that fan. And then there's a vacuum. Um, I have both of these vacuums on here for cleaning up small little parts that uh, cut out and fall onto your crumb tray. This works awesome for that. It's a real quick cleanup. Air duster is um, basically for cleaning like your air assist fan in the back. Just make sure it doesn't spin. You can put one of your uh, straw cleaners in the fan and then blow it out. Um, I did a video previously on this little light board. It's a really good way to get a silhouette of a shape that you're creating an item for. So such as an axe handle like I did in my video. So check that out. I did do a video on that. This wise cam will show your project um, in your Glowforge while you're in another room. If you want to be safe, uh, obviously you want to stay in the room. But if you absolutely can't be in the room and you need it to cut, you can at least keep an eye on it with this video camera here. Um, this little tool is really cool for cleaning the back exhaust of your uh, Glowforge. I did a previous video on this as well. These two things right here are the... 
um, near f uh, field communication tags um, that you can put inside of projects to go to like websites, um, anything that you really wanted to re redirected to. I made some cool business cards out of these. Definitely check that video out too. Um, this little endoscope, this is good if you want to look down into your fan or look into your Glowforge using the camera on your phone. Um, it's a good way to see if there's anything blocking anything or any dirt in there that you can't get to. Um, I did make a real quick video on that as well. And then these are the masking tape removal. Um, so that masking tape we showed you at the start, you use Gorilla Tape or these plastic razor blades and you can get that masking tape off of delicate products pretty easily with both of these. Um, this fast orange soap is uh, what I recommend to get that real grimy, um, um, sticky sap off of your fingers after you cut out a project and if you have the glue that kind of burnt to your um, project and then you wipe it with your hands. This will get your hands nice and clean. It's got like a nice uh, orange pumice in it and it'll uh, get your hands real clean. Um, here's, uh, Woodpeckers is the Baltic Birch from Amazon. Um, all three of these are, um, different things that are available. This looks like it may have changed. I'd be a little, um, I would hold off on this. I used to have it as acrylic so that Amazon must have substituted this out. I'll probably remove this product here. But this is a corrugated cardboard that's all pre-cut for your Glowforge. It's really nice. Um, and then you have these uh, painting tools. So you got acrylic paint pens, color pencils, uh, regular paint, and Sharpies. You can use all of these on like wood products or coloring your um, products after it cuts from the machine. Um, these little pen tablets here are cool for like hand drawing um, characters or uh, filigrees. I got really into filigrees. Those are really cool. If you don't know what those are, check them out. It's kind of like a... Uh, swooshed flower type design. It's an old historical design. Those are super cool. Um, I got one of these for that and specifically. Um, then we have these little ceramic coasters. They come with uh, like cork bottoms. Uh, you can actually engrave on these. I did an entire video where you can use a black sharpie and get a really cool effect on these. Blank dice. You can actually engrave the dice. Those look super cool. Um, there's 3D LED packs, so basically you put a, an acrylic cutout into one of these little LED packs here, and it'll light up the acrylic for like an acrylic sign. And then you have these um, metal business cards is what they call them, but they're actually like uh, oxidized aluminum. It basically will engrave that black paint off of the aluminum cards here, and then it'll leave a really cool business card. Uh, if you want to see that done, it's in that same video as those near field communication tags I was talking about earlier. Same thing with these dog tags. It'll work on all these different colors except for silver. So the silver one will not engrave. Just a heads up on that. Um, you will need some kind of special spray for that, like a sear mark, um, some kind of spray for actual metals. And then um, these are like playing cards. So if you want to make your own kind of playing cards, I did make um, a specific playing card. I found a setting that works. Um, that's totally up to you. If you want to make playing cards, there's those available. You can do the same thing with coasters. Add your own designed coasters here. These are like little paper cork coasters. They work really well. Um, Keychains and earring studs. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Make keychains or earrings out of those. Uh, these are called standoffs here. Um, standoffs are super cool, so if you want to make a sign that kind of jets out, kind of like a business sign, you can do that, and then you use uh, these little caps come off, and they have, like, threaded um, screws in there, and then you screw them back on, and they jet out like one of those business signs. Um, the Light Studios, both of these are a combo that I use together. Uh, so you take your photo of your product inside this light booth, and then you can have um, this tumbler that kind of spins your product around. I did make a, an actual video on both of these products together. Check that out. This is super cool. I use this on almost all my products here. And then you have all of these different types of um, glues and sprays here. So shellac is basically gives it a nice shine and seals in wood if you're going to put it outside. 
you can do that, but you will have to re shellac that pretty often if you're going to be using wood outside. Um, all of these are three different types, or four different types of glue. Uh, tight bond, wood glue, and Gorilla wood glue I use on uh, wood all the time. This Loctite and uh, E6000 works for acrylic. Um, Loctite seems to be the most clear one, but it's hit or miss. And then uh, I have just a couple iPads on here. So if you want to do the same thing as those drawing tablets earlier, you can do those on iPads as well. So if you have an extra iPad laying around, definitely check that out. Um, I can't really remember the name of the uh, product. I think it's called Procreate. Um, check that out. Uh, yeah, that's the name of it. You can actually draw out a design there and import it into your Glowforge. And then finally, we have the four inch uh, style of the um, adapter that goes on the back of your Glowforge. This is a four to six inch um, reducer. So if you wanna use the six inch fan with a four inch um, hose, you would buy this here. Otherwise, you can use the four inch fan. Um, a lot of people recommend going to the six inch fan with the four inch hose and then going back down or staying at six inches going out. I personally have this four inch adapter going into this four inch hose and then coming into this adapter here and then into a six inch infinity fan and then goes back down to the four inch hose out the window. And then finally, this is the connector that I have where it connects to the end of the hose and then it's an easy attachable and disattachable uh, product that can go to my window insert. So I think I covered pretty much everything there. Sorry if it was too long of a video. Um, I just wanted to go as in-depth as possible, as quick as possible for you guys. Hopefully you found some value out of all this and find a product that you enjoy. Uh, once again, if you want to check out any of these products or this entire list, I will leave the link in the description below. And uh, I do make a commission off that and it helps the YouTube channel if you would like to do that. Other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next episode, and I hope you guys are enjoying this series.